Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about the summoner and we're going to be talking about how I play the summoner and go over a few skills. So first of all, as you can see here, that I am a wind summoner. I play a wind build and uh, I do not play the earth build. So let's go over the wind build. So the wind build, your basic rotation is quite simple. It revolves all around your left mouse button, which is Rose Thorn over here, and your right mouse button, which is your Rumble Beast. Your main source of damage will come from Rumble Beast. Keep that in mind, okay? Let's go over the skills. So Rose Thorn, basically, this is your regular attack. This generates focus for you. So by spamming your left mouse button, you will get focus back. So your second skill is Rumble Bees over here. You want to be uh, sticking with the increased damage because you're going to be alternating between your regular, your uh, left mouse button and your right mouse button. So to demonstrate over here, look, I'm going to click right mouse button now and you're going to see that I have a cast time. You see there's a 2.5 second cast time to shoot the Rumble Bees. However, if I use my left click and then I do the right click right away, it's going to be an instant cast. So left click, right click, you see there is no charge time between these two skills. So that's why you want to stick with this one because A, it does more damage than the other options and B, it also helps you manage your focus slightly better because you're doing focus recovery attack and then a increased damage attack and you're alternating between the two. That way your focus doesn't get drained immediately. And then as for your number one skill, Weed Whack, this can be used to snare people if you want. However, I personally prefer to use it for increased damage, as well as Vine Whip. Vine Whip can be a daze or a knockdown, or it can also be used for increased damage. This is up to personal preference. Then there's your number three. Your three is also a very important spell. So if you use Self Enhance, this one gives you damage. It deals, you know, 47,000 damage to 50,000 damage uh, for 10 seconds, which is pretty strong. However, it can also be used as Petal Storm, which is a projectile protect for 10 seconds. So it depends really on the situation. If you're playing solo, if you're just leveling up, if you're just playing in a pug group, just go with the Enhanced Self. I normally stick with Petal Storm Toss for the majority of the part of the of the game. The only time I ever do use Petal Storm is in raids when there are specific uh, scenarios where it requires a projectile protection. Then next is your four skill over here, which is Sea Trout. It's quite important uh, because it basically Sea Trout is your block and your counter. So you can see when this when there's two seconds when I'm holding up the the flower. I am blocking and uh, it's quite important to know that I just learned this last week in Vortex Temple but for most classes you can block and move at the same time. I did not know that you could press 4 block and you can run around and you'd block anything that hits in front of you which is pretty amazing. Um, so you know anyhow your 4 skill is a block and the moment it procs your block or your counter, it, it's called a counter, but it, technically it can block as well. Um, but you go invisible for 6 seconds and you run extra fast. As you can see here that I have the home moon skill, if you have the home moon skill, it will give you 4% uh, HP recovery as well as 4 focus recovery while you're invisible, which is extremely useful. So after you press 4 twice, you know, you press 4 here and you press 4 again, you can see that you get the little flower next to, next to your character and your entire team will also get that flower. When they get that flower, as you can see here, Enhanced Sea Trout, this is the skill you're casting. The moment that you're stealth, you will resist damage once, and it'll be for that one second. You get that one second iframe. However, you also won't be able to get CC'd. During stealth, you have resistance to, to stun, to dazes, to knockback, which is extremely useful. And even better is your entire party, the moment they get stealth, they get 4% of their health back. It also recovers one extra percent um, by the more people you stealth. So if you stealth 6 people, you get 6%. If you stealth 5 people, you get an extra 5%, which is which is great. So that covers all of the summoner, uh, the summoner spells other than your heal, the huzzah. So over here you can see I'm hovering over the my heal or my Z skill, which is the huzzah. So it heals 10% of my HP, it heals 20% of Marquis HP, and it heals 60% of my team's HP. Keep in mind the 60% is over 24 seconds. So over 24 seconds, they'll slowly, slowly heal them over time up to 60% of their HP. 
And another thing is it also gives 15 seconds of the inspiration effect, which allows my allows their cooldowns, including my cooldowns, to be decreased by one second every time I do a block or a counter. So it's really important to know that this skill is extremely, extremely, extremely strong, especially on Vortex Temple, because like the moment you get uh, CC'd or when you're about to get CC'd, you can use your heal and it'll help everyone just live a little bit longer, especially during the orb phase uh, on the Twin Asuras. Next is your X skill, which is True Friend. Make uh, Keep in mind, you can only use your X skill, your C skill, and your V skill. You can only use these three skills when your cat is alive. When your cat dies, these three skills are uncastable. You cannot use these three skills if your cat is not alive. So it's really important to keep Marky alive or to make sure that your cat stays alive at all times, especially during the middle of a raid or a middle of a dungeon fight. So True Friend basically is like the same as the Gunner. It gives you a five second iframe. However, it also recovers 5% of your health. But keep in mind, it does take 10% of your cat's HP. So it's really important to know that. And if your cat's HP is below 11%, you cannot cast this spell. So it's really important to know where your cat is at all times. So that covers the summoner spells. So you know, we got your Weed Whack, you've got your Vine Whip, your Petal Storm Toss, your Stealth, your Heal, and your Iframe. So these, these are your main skills that you can cast. So now let's talk about our cat, or Marky. So Marky can do a whole bunch of things. The 90% of your CCs, in my case, 100% of my CCs come from Marky. If Marky is dead, I cannot do any CCs with my current build. So keep that in mind. Um, so I have a Daze, which is my Strike, as my C skill. I have a Double Knockdown, which is my V skill. And I have a Double Stun, which is my Tab. So how does this work? It's quite simple. In order to get your double KD on your V skill, you actually need to unlock the skill. You need to have the Home Moon skill in order to do the double, the double KD. Without this, without the skill, it would only be a single KD. Keep that in mind. So how do you do a double stun? It's quite simple. You just hold down tab. Holding down tab and Marky will, your cat will immediately do a double stun. However, there is a cooldown. As you can see here, there is a cooldown here. It's both says it's unavailable, one is 20 is ticking down a couple seconds. So when these cooldowns are off, then you can do a double stun. If you don't have these, you can't do anything, they just charge in and they don't do anything. As for the KDs, you just hold down V and then he'll do a double double KD. Keep in mind that he needs to cast it twice. The reason why my cooldown went off there was because he didn't hit any targets. So for example, I hit this target, Marky runs in. And now, I, let's say now I need to do a double KD. I'm going to press V. You see, I can cast it again, and I press V again. So that's how you do a double KD. However, you can just hold down the V key if you have low ping, and I'll cast it twice. In my case, because my ping is relatively high, I'm sitting on around 280 to 300 ping, I smash the V key. I smash it like four or five times in order to do a double KD because of lag. Um, as for the tab, if you have low ping, you just hold down tab and you'll be fine. In my case, I smashed the tab key because, uh, because again, because of ping. So there's that. Um, other than these two CCs, you have your days. Uh, keep in mind, in PvP, if you do, uh, you need to use the days in order to do the knockoff. So let's say you go in, so you do a days. And then if you're in PvP, after they're dazed, your V will be turned into a knockoff where you can shoot or you can launch the target into the air. It's extremely uh, useful in certain places like in Outlaw Island and on Musha's Tower, you know, just to buy that extra time where the enemy can't defend. Keep in mind when an enemy is in the air, they cannot defend themselves and all your attacks will hit them. Other than that, then, the, then it comes to your Q skill, your E skill, and your SS. So your SS is a root. Keep in mind it is a root. When you you see there, you see all those all those vines over there, that roots the target. So keep in mind that your SS does root targets and it will also uh, make it's also a two second iframe, which is extremely strong. Now let's talk about your Q and your E. Your Q is your cat taunt and your E is Beckett. So there is a lot of people that for Q, they leave it at cat taunt even though they you have a tank in the team. If you have a tank in the team, it's very important to change your spec from your taunt 
to the regular one, to Crouching Tiger. No, from the taunt to your familiar. The main reason why switching to the familiar is better normally is because you recover 12 focus for 8 seconds. So 12 focus is a lot, you know, you only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So recovering 12, uh, 12 focus over 8 seconds is a lot because you only have uh, 10 bars of focus. So by using them, you get your focus back really fast and it's, you know, you can pump out more DPS basically. So it's extremely important to spec on the regular or familiar. However, if you do not have a tank, it is very beneficial to go and use the taunt spell. So why, why not use the taunt spell normally when you have a tank? A lot of people would say, I'm helping out the tank by making his job easier with the cat taunt so you know the boss isn't hitting the tank all the time. However, the problem with cat taunt is it resets the boss's animations. So each boss has its own rotation of skills that it needs to go through before it resets. However, the cat taunt resets the animation every time. So it makes the job for the tank much harder every time you cat taunt because he doesn't know what's the next skill going to be because it's going to be reset it. So it's really important not to use the cat taunt if you have a capable tank, if you have a good tank. Because a good tank will know, okay, the boss's attack pattern is rotations and everything and will have a very good understanding on how to hold aggro and how to tank the boss. So cat taunt is used in very specific situations. The first one, the most obvious one, is when you don't have a tank. When you don't have a tank, cat taunt will save your day because you know you can keep the boss in one place, he's attacking your cat, and you have free DPS. Your entire team has no burdens, they can just focus on damaging the boss or doing whatever mechanic which is needed to pass the dungeon. So that will that's a godsend, basically. The second case scenario is when your DPS, for example, your gunner, does more damage than your tank. So let's say that you have a blade master, but even with his threat skills, because he's so much un so he's so undergeared compared to your gunner that he can't hold aggro against your gunner. So this is where cat taunt would come in. You would immediately initiate the fight with your cat, go into cat taunt. That way you buy 8 seconds of time for your gunner to use his tombstone, use all his big spells. The moment he's finished with that big spells, you also have 8 seconds on your blade master or on your KFM to generate enough threat to hold the aggro. So when the when the cat loses aggro, the, it'll, the boss will immediately start attacking your tank. So, you know, this these are very niche and very quirky situations. However, it happens a lot in in my in my guild and in my party and in my pre-mates, which is why I usually have cat taunt spec. But let's say you have a very capable tank that knows all the rotations and is very well geared. Then obviously you don't need cat taunt anymore. That way you would go over here to familiar. The main reason you'd go to familiar is because it gives you 12 focus over 8 seconds. So the 12 focus over 8 seconds is extremely, extremely strong because the more focus you get, the more you can spam rumble bees. And for the wind build, your like 80% of your damage, 90% of your damage revolves around rumble bees. So this is why uh, having this extra focus regen is extremely strong. All right, so the next skill over here is beckon. So beckon's an extremely strong skill. So basically, first of all, beckon will call your your cat back towards you. When you call your cat, during that period, during that animation, you and the cat are invincible. It's an iframe. Keep that in mind, that it's an iframe. Uh, and other than that, it also breaks from snares. So if you're frozen on the ground and you use your your E, you'll you'll unfreeze yourself. That's so really it's really strong, especially in Starstone Mines. If you get hit by the ice ring by, from Frosca, you can use your E skill and immediately break out of the ice. However, there is a cooldown for this spell, so keep that in mind. As you can see here, when I put E, there is a 30 second cooldown for me to break through snares. So other than that, you can also use it when you are stunned, dazed, knocked down, unconscious, grappled, controlled, or phantom gripped. So there are, that's a lot of status elements. However, if you call your cat back during while you are already CC'd, you will not break out of that CC. The only CC you can break out of is from snares with this skill. Um, other than that, 
He'll also call your cat back. Your cat will stop attacking whatever target it was attacking before. He will just follow you the entire time and won't aggro uh, and won't be aggro towards anything. And it also, most important, it also resets your Q or your cat taunt. So let's say I attack over there and he's, uh, you know, let's say I'm cat taunting this guy, right? And then suddenly this another guy comes over here and flanks me. I can immediately call my cat back and cat taunt on my location. And then I can run away and make more space as the as whoever was flanking me will start attacking the, uh, the cat. As for the ultimates, I've covered these before, but Rumble Queen is basically, you know, a huge burst of damage. And besties, it just gives you, uh, you know, you resist damage and re resist uh, status effects. You know, it's and you also daze the enemy three times. It's, um, you know, I never use besties to be honest. I've never used it before, even in all the situations and, and the many hours I've played. I've never actually used this skill. However, you know, your Rumble Queen is a great opener. It does quite a bit of damage, and I quite enjoy using that skill. So let's talk about weapons. So weapons, first of all, were, uh, you want to go Baleful if you're going a Wind Summoner. The main reason is because with Baleful, it increases your Rumble Bee's damage by 10%. After going to Baleful, depending on uh, depending on how often you can do raids, you can start you can start thinking about either going to Raven Three or going to Dawn Forge. Looking in retrospect, since I'm already I already went the Raven path, I highly recommend most players to go Dawn Forge. The main reason is because the damage difference between Dawnforge and Raven for the Wind Summoner is not that big. You're, we're looking about you know five to ten k difference in DPS, so you know it's it's not huge, it's not insane. Like for example, the Gunner, the Gunner has maybe like thirty to forty k uh, damage difference if you go to from Dawnforge or if you go to Raven. However, on the Summoner, the difference is not that big. So I recommend a lot of players to go from Baleful to Dawnforge to at least Dawnforge 6 and then think about switching over or going straight to Dawnforge 9 and switching over to Raven. The main reason again is because the damage difference is really not that big. So um, it really depends on you. Again, if you want to become strong now, just like how I want it to be, uh, go Raven Path. However, keep in mind Raven Path is very, very, very expensive. Like I had to farm very, uh, I had to farm a lot of these Elysian crystals. These Elysian crystals uh, will really, really, really kill you. Um, but yeah, going the Dawnforge Path is what I usually recommend for Wind Summoners. So, um, but eventually, you know, your end goal is to get to Raven Nine. Uh, however. The, diff the power difference from Raven 3 to Raven 6 and Raven 6 to Raven 9 is really minimum. It's not that big. Like from Raven 3 to Raven 6, I only gained about 5,000 uh, DPS, which is very, very small considering the cost. The cost from Raven 3, as we can see here, from Raven 3 to Raven 6 cost 360 Elysian Crystals, 270 Moonstones, 75 Legendary Elements, and 9 PTSs, as well as 19 of the Raven King Souls. So it's a huge amount of materials for a very little DPS increase. That's why I recommend people to go from Dawn Forge 3 to Dawn Forge 6. As we can see from here, you know, you're looking only at 120 um, Elysian Crystals. You're looking at a little bit more Moonstones, you know, you're looking at 360. You're looking at, you know, a couple, 1,350 Soul Stones, some Void Fragments, uh, 6 PTS, which is 3 less than before, as well as 75 Legendary Elements, which is a lot more achievable than the farming the other path from Raven 3 to Raven 6. And the damage difference between Raven 6 and Dawn Forge 6 is only about 10k at most. So that covers weapons. Um, next up is your accessories. Obviously, I've had a lot of luck and a lot of time to work on my accessories, which is why I have the Awakened Dragonstorm Ring Stage 2. Uh, this is the BT accessory. And as more for my earring, is also a BT earring. So these two will help, especially the earring. The earring will help quite a bit on damage. And the ring is there for focus regeneration. Um, because I play in relatively high ping at 250, 280 ping, 
focus is not really a big problem for me. The main reason is because um, I just attack slower than most people who would have low ping. So for me, the BT ring is more than enough for me to sustain my focus. However, if you play on low ping, I suggest you can take a look at the Sky Shatter ring. It's the PvP ring. It is also an alternative. So you can think about either going Sky Shatter ring or by going BT uh, Wind ring. It's up to you really, personal preference. And then the earring, you have to go BT earring because this gives you a big damage increase. Your necklace, again, just stick with the Oath necklace because, you know, VT neck is very, very, very far down the line. Even for me, I'm looking at maybe two months to three months before I even have a chance to get my wind necklace. So just stick with your Oath necklace. You don't have to level up to stage 10. You could probably just settle with stage 6 is more than good, is more than enough. Bracelet, you want to go for Divine Dragon Bracelet for sure. Your belt, again, this you don't have to upgrade to max, but belt is just survivability. Uh, your gloves, you can go with the tr uh, true Starstone gloves. This one is the one that you get from Frostgun and Starstone. Or you can go for the Hollows gloves. Or if you don't have any of these, or you can't do those dungeons yet, it's okay, you can just get the Hollows gloves, which you can get at the vendor, which is these, these Hollows gloves. Um, as for your badge, you want the Enigma Mystic Badge. The main reason why you want Enigma is because of the recovers focus by 60% over 3 seconds upon successful Thorn Strike or Vine Whip. So that's the only reason you want the Enigma, is just to give you more focus. Um, when the new Mystic Badge changes do come in eventually, maybe in like 4 or 5 months, you know, then we'll look at the different Mystic Badges. But until then, just stick with the Enigma. As for your soul badges, uh, you want to go with the Courage first. Courage will increase your damage of your Rumble Bees by 500% for 3 or 5 seconds depending on which skill you use. So if you use the Enhanced one, the Petal Storm Toss, you will have 5 seconds of 500% increased damage of your Rumble Bees. If you use the Petal Storm, which is the Projectile Resist, you'll get 3 seconds of increased Rumble Bees which uh, it's also pretty good. So the second the second badge that you want is, is the Glory Badge. So the Glory Badge, basically every time you hit a regular Rumble Bee, when you crit with normal Rumble Bees, you'll reduce the cooldown of Vine Whip by one second. And if you hit it with Enhanced Rumble Bees, it'll decrease it by two seconds for each crit. Enhanced Rumble Bees is basically when you're soul burned. That's the only difference. So this the main reason why you want the Glory one is Number one is the only one the Courage Badge can, can fuse with at the moment, which is kind of a bummer. But second of all, more importantly, is when you finally do get your Vortex Temple Mystic Badge, your Aransu Mystic Badge, it will, uh, it procs through your Vine Whip. So you're gonna need to spam. The more Vine Whips you can, you can push out, the more procs of your Aransu Mystic Badge you'll get, which is extremely strong. Your soul, you know, just go the short cooldown soul because you're spamming a lot, uh, you know, with the awakened ascending soul or true ascending soul, blah, blah, blah. As for your pet aura, try to get your pet aura to stage six because you get that 200 instant HP recovery on critical hit, which is quite useful. And as for your soul shield, you need to get at least three piece uh, Black Tower. You can buy this off the bat immediately, so you don't even have to do Black Tower to buy this. But getting your three piece is extremely important. The main reason is because uh, Doom and Bloom cooldown decreased by 30%, Doom and Bloom damage increased by 190%. So why is Doom and Bloom, uh, Doom and Bloom so important? The main reason is because your bracelet. So to proc your bracelet, if you go the Divine uh, Dragon bracelet, is you need to cast Doom and Bloom and you'll get, it'll activate it for 6 seconds. So the more Doom and Blooms you have, the more uh, bracelet procs you have, the more damage you do. That's the entire purpose around this. So unlike the Earth build, you do not need to do all MSP. You want to get 3 piece Black Tower as soon as you can, and then the rest can be MSP and you slowly slowly work your way up towards uh, 8 piece Black Tower. Once you have your 8 piece Black Tower, you'll, have, you'll unlock Rumblebee's damage increase by 15%, which is a huge damage increase. So just keep that in mind. After you have 8 piece uh, Black Tower, then you can slowly start working towards uh, Vortex Temple or your VT Soul Shields. 
and then just work your way up and slowly upgrade and so forth and so on but yeah that's basically what you want to look at for equipment wise so there's another skill that i forgot to cover that is actually really important because it actually procs your bracelet and that is doom and bloom so doom and bloom is actually here it's your f skill okay so f your doom and bloom basically it'll damage the enemies for five seconds it does quite a bit of damage more importantly it also steals 50 percent of the damage as hp so it gives you sustainability basically it gives you a 50 percent life steal which is extremely extremely strong especially for the summoner and it also heals your pet and it gives you more focus it gives you 10 focus over uh, five seconds your basic rotation if you don't have your mystic badge and you don't have your soul badge is going to be you press f you cast that and then you left click, right click, press F, left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click. And whenever your F skill, your Doom and Bloom is up, you would press F and then you cast it again and left click, right click, left click, right click. Rinse and repeat. So it is a very simple, simple, simple uh, combination. You know, it's just F, LMB, RMB, F, LMB, RMB, rinse and repeat. However, if you do have your Courage Soul Badge, then in order to get your Enhanced Rumble Bees or that 500% increase in your Rumble Bees damage, you need to use Petal Storm or Petal Storm Toss depending on what you prefer. So that would be 3, then F, and then left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, rinse and repeat. Okay? Then later on when you get your, um, your Mystic Badge, then you want to start casting Vine Whip which is your two. So it would be, you'd be F, three, two, and then you can press F again for uh, flying nestles for more damage, and then left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, and that's it. So, you know, that's the basic combination. It's basically gonna be F, three, two, left click, right click, left click, right click, and you just rinse and repeat. Usually you press two, uh, F twice because of Doom and Bloom and Nestles. Uh, but yeah, that is my basic rotation. However, you can see here your one skill. I use increased damage for this because I want to do more damage. However, you can also keep it as a snare in case you know you want to snare people and they get close to you or something as a defensive skill. However, if you use it as your, um, as your damage skill, then you can add in one. So your basic rotation now changes to F, one, two, uh, three, two, one, F, left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click, and that's it. So you know, you're pressing F twice, three, two, one, left click, right click, rinse and repeat. So that's your basic rotation, and uh, that's it really, you know, your rotation is relatively easy. All you have to do is just spam buttons, uh, but yeah, you know. The Summoner is not a very difficult class, I admit, it's quite a simple class. However, a lot of the skills, a lot of the rotations, not much is known about it. And I have seen on Reddit recently that there are more and more people with questions about the Wind Summoner. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions regarding the Wind Summoner specifically, please let me know in the comment section below. Regarding the Earth Summoner, the rotation is more or less the same. However, the problem is I don't like the Earth Summoner. I don't like the rotation. I don't like the playstyle of it. That's why I don't feel like I'm qualified to cover it. However, if people want to know my opinion on like how Earth Summoner is or just, you know, I mean, I'm more than happy to share what I think about it. However, I do not play the Earth Summoner. I just want to put that out there and let everyone know, okay? Anyhow, I hope this video helped, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.